Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. When it comes to prophecy, we have assurance as believers that our expectations are justified. It helps us to get a bird's eye view of the rapid progression that we've seen occur the past several decades since 9-11-2001. It would be impossible to quickly go over all of the evidence that we've seen for Christ's near return. Even non-believers know that something's going on. But of all that evidence, we've even forgotten much of what we've seen. Uh, much of it, without a doubt, was, no, was uh, without question, it was relevant. We're not looking for the Antichrist. We're looking for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. But we can't deny seeing the spirit of the Antichrist that denies Jesus Christ, God of very God, the one who came in the flesh, the God of Israel and the church. And the God of Israel and, and the church has a counterfeit that has direct ties to God's promise of blessing toward Abraham involving his sons Isaac and Ishmael. And if we're going to talk about prophecy, we really need to go all the way back to that. And it's, it's crucial that we understand that if we are to make any sense of what we see going on in the world, particularly in the Middle East, if we're going to make any sense of that at all, we need to look at this straight on, head on, for just what, what it is and what we're seeing. I think on the, on the part of, of many people, believers and non-believers alike, we tend to, to not really see what's taking place right in front of our very eyes. And that is because we've gotten so far removed from the Bible. Unlike the non-believing world, we know that the reality of this conflict, we know it's, it is a spiritual conflict. And that we also know that we have front row seats to this conflict between good and evil that's playing out before our eyes. It is true that our focus is to be on Christ, but God doesn't expect us to hide our heads in the sand. Watching how world-changing events transpire is, is to our benefit. Now, history may be boring to some, but history is God's story. God's plan of redemption is worked out through history, and it's not unusual to see patterns surface in looking at names and events and dates and numbers because we see that in the Bible itself. Major events in history are certainly not to be glanced at too quickly, such as Israel becoming a nation again, which was basically the most incredible fulfillment of prophecy of the last century. And now, did you get that? The last century. Of course, our Lord's return for us is near. We here at BlessedHopeForever.com have wondered, just as you have, when the Lord will remove His church. Those of you who are not pre-trib, uh, this message is really not for you. The body of Christ will not be subject to that seven-year period of wrath. God's purpose changes. When the age of grace is complete, God will pick up again, once again, and fulfill His program for His people Israel. And we can see from Scripture that we are not here present during that time. Now, I want to talk about something that I've been looking at for quite a while, and I, I understand that everybody, everyone's hopes is, is for the fall here of, of the year 2021. But in case we're, we're, still, we're not gone, in case we're still here, if nothing happens this fall, I'd like for you to think about something that concerns the spring of 2022 and and so we'll go over this, some of the facts that I've gathered, I've compiled that, that will hopefully put this all into perspective. 
the Ottoman uh, dynasty. It ruled from 1299 to 1922. That was 623 years. The dissolution of the Ottoman Empire was, was covered a 14-year period uh, up until 1922, 1908 to 1922. The Ottoman Empire signed the armistice on 30 October 1918. World, the World War I, First World War, ends November 11th, 1918. And in May of 1919, Greece uh, takes control of the area around Smyrna. And uh, so that occupation of Smyrna started on 15 May 1919 just a day after the date that Israel would become a nation again in 1948. So 30 years passes and Israel's reborn May 14, 1948. Now it's interesting, we, I pointed this out many times before in my videos, the first Pentecost was May 14, 34 AD. If 34 AD was in fact the year of the crucifixion, then it just turns out that May 14 would have been the first Pentecost, and it's marked as such on Torah calendar. This is what we believe here at BlessedHopeForever.com. It's 34 AD. Some might, may say 30, 31, 32, 33. We're at 34 AD. At least all our research has, has shown that uh, that to be the case. So in proposing that as the first Pentecost, May 14, 34 AD. I would like to propose an idea, and this is just an idea, and I'm not asking, as usual, if, that anyone agree with any of the conclusions that I've reached here, but that the second coming could occur on a May 14. The first Pentecost on a May 14, the second coming on a May 14, and of course Israel being reborn on a May 14, but the proposed idea is that this second coming occurs on a May 14 when Israel completes her 80th year. Not begins it, but completes it. That's the new and novel idea that we've, we've uh, been exploring here at BlessedHopeForever.com. So we're not looking at the beginning of something as much as we are the end of something. Israel completing her, her 80th year, not begin, beginning her 80th year. Now, going back to the Ottoman Empire, the, the partition of the Ottoman Empire was finalized under the terms of a 1920 treaty, and the Sultanate was abolished on 1 November 1922. The former... The, the official abolition of the Ottoman Sultanate was performed by uh, the Grand National Assembly of Turkey on 1 November 1922, and the last Sultan left the country on 17 November 1922. The Republic of Turkey was established in its place on 29 October 1923 in the new capital city of Ankara, and the Caliphate, the Caliphate, and that's a key word in this discussion, was abolished on 3 March 1924. 1924. We have been witnessing for as long as, as any of us really can remember, I guess if, if you're my generation at least, you've been since the I became an adult and I watched the hostage crisis unfold in Iran under Jimmy Carter. We know from the Bible that the land of Palestine is a, a hotbed of, of spiritual uh, and biblical uh, prophetic activity. And it has been for as long as, as any of us have, have for longer than, than all of us have been alive, so just keeping in mind what we've seen unfold since 9-11-2001. And uh, I would also refer you back to some of the videos I've done in the past on, on who I believe or what I believe the Antichrist system to be. 
which has direct uh, connections with this caliphate, this revived Ottoman Empire, the deadly wound that was healed. I want to take your uh, attention now uh, back to the spring of 34 AD. Spring equinox, March 22, 34 AD. This would be one day before, the day before Christ was crucified. His crucifixion being March 23rd of 34 AD. That would make the resurrection March 26, 34 AD, four days into spring. And then 50 days later, we see the first Pentecost on May 14, 34 AD. Now that's all marked on Torah calendar. We know Israel's rebirth was May 14, 1948 AD. And so Israel turns 80 May 14, 2028, but Israel will not complete her 80th year until May 14, 2029, which is why I propose the following timeline, working backwards, okay, from May 14, 2029, the return of Christ to earth to reign and rule for a thousand years. May 14, 2029. Now that is month three of in day one on the Hebrew calendar, the month of Savan. That that's when Israel would complete her 80th year. Now I want you to look at Exodus 19. Verse 1, on the first day of the third month, Savan, that's the very day we're looking at. After the Israelites left Egypt on that very day, the day that Israel will complete 80 years, they came to the desert of Sinai, and after they had set out from, uh, from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the, to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt. Well, that seems to mirror the tribulation period. And how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself, that, that certainly seems to mirror the tribulation period or the second coming. And I read that verse and it seems to me folks like the above could verse several verses could shadow the second coming as well as the tribulation period god's deliverance and judgment are seen we see the word the words uh, eagle's wings and we know from revelation 12 14 that uh, to israel is given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she's nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent so let's, let's look at what happens when we subtract 2550 days from a return on May 14, 2029. Then we would get a rapture date of May 21st, 2022. In spring, uh, the spring equinox uh, uh, would be March 20, March 20, March 21. But this rapture date would be May 21. Now, it's not impossible that the rapture occurs on some inconspicuous day, folks. It doesn't really even have to be Pentecost. Of course, Pentecost will be on June 5th. It will follow that, June 5th. But uh, May 21, 2022 would be the proposed rapture date. We know the Lord said in Matthew 24, 44, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour, a time, that is a time, a season, as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. We've always looked for significant days. Uh, we here at Blessed Hope Forever are probably more guilty of that than anyone. But thinking outside the box, let's, let's think that perhaps it doesn't occur. Okay, on the, on the Pentecost, June 5, 20. 22, but on May 21, 2022. Now, if we have a return on May 14, 2029, that's month three, day one of the month of Savan, when, when Israel completes 80 years, that will also mark the date of the first Pentecost in 34 AD. So in short, the return of Jesus Christ would occur on May 14, 2029, Month three, day one, the exact day Israel completes her 80th year as a nation, and, and, 
on the date in which the church began on the first Pentecost in 34 AD. Just something to think about. There's always reason to, to look up. The days are short, folks. We're seeing it all unfold right before our very eyes. If we just connect the dots and we stay true uh, to God's Word and remain diligent in the study of His Word, we won't be left in the dark. Look, I, I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.